All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to whatever time zone you're in. So it's been quite a while and a lot has changed. But for starters, if you can see, my Ranger is back from Langinger, and I can't be more happy with what I've gotten. And it did snowball to a certain extent. But more on this is just going to be kind of a little bit show and tell of the vehicle. Also an update on other things. And sort of, kind of tell you how I'm going to try and present my going forward with this truck. So, for starters, the front sus suspension is all assembled and basically done. Everything with the suspension is done. And Langager was, I can't thank them enough for how good everything turned out, especially with fixing the issues with this front kit. And there's more to go into that. Um, this front kit from them, do not get them. Even though I got uh, my money back for this kit, this was not even the kit I ordered in the first place. But the just the what you should take away from what I'm saying, I'll probably get into it more with another via another video of they rightly deserve to get lambasted for their poor quality control and poor customer service because the amount of issues this front kit has caused not only an aggravation but money it cost me do not get this kit I'm going to use it for the time being because at this point it it cost me money but the money I did spend with them to get this kit I got back which ultimately spent on uh, with Lancaster in order to fix True Travel's F up. Do not get them. But other than that, it's together pretty good. As I said, their problem with their company is quality control and customer service. Uh, so here's the back. So the whole back suspension and everything is the camber three link, four link setup with uh, Langinger's custom housing, nine inch housing. They put the whole camber, it's got basically everything cambered back here. And the only thing that's custom that they built was the whole cage, bed cage back here welded to the frame. Um, Langinger got me a good deal on this fuel cell. So the fuel cell before, which I don't know where it is. Oh, it's in the corner behind me. Uh, that fuel cell is not going to get used. It's too small, and the way they were explaining things to me, um, trying to get the truck to have good weight distribution, and they said that you mostly want... I think it was 60 40 waste distribution where you want most of the weight on the back. Well, it's kind of hard when the drive line's in the front. So, I think this fuel tank is a 32 or 35 gallon fuel tank. And the main reason they said to go with this is for weight, which is makes sense. Um, right now, this is not going to be a permanent spare. I need to get two tires, but I'm going to have two full-size spares back here. I have your typical DOT lights you would find on heavy-duty trucks. I'm going to run them. Um, those two are supposed to be reverse lights. I have to wire everything up. Got a two-inch receiver mainly for recovery points. Um, I would use it to tow that two-up trailer, but that's about as much as I would tow with this thing on very small amounts, depending on what I'm doing with this. But generally, this is supposed to be a uh, recovery point. So if you can see down here, kind of hard to see, that's Langager's housing. Um, 
the way we went about with this housing is it's future proof. So internals of this housing is just your typical nine inch with I think 35 axle splines. Um, this housing can hold a 10 inch ring gear and 40 splines. Um, basically the beefiest of beef you can put in these housings, but we did the just the typical nine inch and the smaller axle shafts for cost and because it still has the stock drive line. I doubt I'm going to hurt that axle with the stock drive line. It's got a spool in it, drive shaft in it, new drive shaft. Oh, it's got 35s on it, but it's a metric 35 for the 16 inch wheels I have. Tire's a little low. Um, just kind of giving a overview of what has been done. As I said, from the frame rail down is all Camberg stuff they installed. Up here was their own custom cage work doing with a sway bar. I might as well do the sway bar so I don't have as bad body roll. Um, like I said, they fixed all the issues with the front kit. So I'll use the front kit for now. Um, they made a crossover bar, kind of hard to see, to tie the rear lower control arms mounts together. Uh, and in the front as well is they did this engine cradle, I forget what you call it, this engine cradle, basically to keep the coil buckets that I have down there um, from flexing inward to the engine and kind of make some rigidity for the front. Um, at that point, I wanted to do more, but I ran out of money. I basically ran out of money and I don't want the sitting in their shop taking up their valuable space when I don't have the money to pay them. So that's where we ended the work. And I'll be back to them for when I have more money saved up so I can just get ball rolling. And let me put the, this up. The idea is I don't want to take up their valuable space and time when I can't pay them. So at that point, uh, I said, uh, that's pretty good. As long as I have working front suspension and rear suspension, I can work with this and putting it back together to a running and driving state in order to putz around and play with it. Um, I'm going to try and be self-disciplined enough to not jump this thing until I get an actual cage in it, which I knew I wasn't going to have money for because the whole factory dash harness is probably going to get removed and severely sliced down. So they fixed the front suspension. They did the bar across for the lower A-arms engine cradle for structural integrity up here and basically the whole back half of the truck I got a basically I brought them a rolling chassis I got a rolling chassis back that was the idea so from this point forward I'm going to get it back up and running with the stock drive line and with this four liter with a cam in it eventually I have an M90 to put on here, but that will be later down the road. Um, this truck has been down for, it's 20, is it 2014? No, wrong, 2020. It's down from 2020. So four years, because I have the plate with the last registration sticker for when I bought it. This thing's been down for four years. And majority of that four years was, how am I going to do the back half? And that's when I broke down and just brought it to Linkager, and they outdid themselves. So I'm so glad I did that. I could never gotten it to this point or how 
it would have taken me another five to seven years to get it to this point, and I would have probably cost three times as much as what I paid them to do this, which I probably will get into another video of how much this cost me because it's a very real question and I don't want to have it taboo of how much money I spent on this. Uh, right now, I believe estimated with the truck price included, I think I spent around 43 or 45 grand on this truck. 20 grand of that is probably in parts. I would have to go through all my invoices and receipts that I try and keep and organize. But that is a rough estimate to the way you see this truck now. About 45 grand, I would say. And probably a couple grand of that is in parts that I'm probably not going to use that I bought anyway. I'm trying to not buy parts that I'm not going to use. See, that's one of the problems with projects like this. You think of one way and then you end up going a different way. For instance, I was going to do a F-150 88 out of a 90s truck. But ultimately, for future proofing, as Way Lankinger said, or Ryan Lankinger, I would have to redo the whole axle if I were to put a different drive line in the thing. Because the 8.8 is okay, but it's not foolproof and it will break, which I knew that going into it. Now, the way we did this axle makes more sense. It has smaller components in the axle, so the internal components of this axle are like a stack, stock 9-inch. Uh, and that's fine for this driveline, and it costs less than to put beefy everything in here. But this axle gives me a good foundation for upgrading the future when I do break it with a different driveline which means instead of ordering, doing the whole redo in the axle, I can get a different center section and different axle shafts. The housing doesn't change, which means this is a future-proof axle, which is very nice when you think about it. As I say, cry once, buy once, cry once, I think it is, yeah. So... With that said, here's kind of the plans with this truck moving forward. As you know, I kind of ran out of money. So the idea with this truck is to get it running and driving with, how do I put, bare minimum or the least, I, how do I explain this? Not really the bare minimum, but enough to get it running and driving respectfully enough and not have things butchered. So my idea to get this thing running and driving without costing a whole lot is prioritize trying to get the engine running. And to do that, I would need to put all the factory harness I took out back in, which was the... The plan, anyway. The engine harness is out. The PCM's out. They're going to get reused. But the battery's no longer going to stay here. I am remo removing the battery from here. And I want to put it back in front of the tank somewhere. But I'm unsure where and how I will mount it. Because I don't want it to enter twine with the rear axle because the rear axle will come up pretty far so electrically all the factory harnesses i took out of this i'm putting back in but with that said it means i have to adapt the factory harness that came from the cab up to the stock fuel tank which is no longer there and modify it to run with this fuel tank which will be a separate video on how i'm going to do that here comes where the other part is, is I'm going to have to spend a little bit of money to future-proof the fuel system in this truck. So, 
this truck will get a fuel system that can handle up to about, I would like to say, 800 to 1,000 horsepower. This driveline will never get there, but I want to future-proof it. This thing's also getting changed from a factory returnless to a return style. That will begin into another video. And I will get the fuel gauge working with this tank. Again, another video. Um, I will adapt factory harness to work with this fuel tank and the lights back there. Um, I'm trying to use as much factory components I took off back on the truck just to keep the cost down. Um, I do need to go through the brakes. The pedal is kind of spongy, but I think that's because that master cylinder is for drum brakes. There's rear disc brakes. I think I need to change the master. doesn't leak. I believe the master. And there's other low-priority things I need to do. Um, I need fenders, put a front clip back on it, and a bumper, which are all low priority stuff right now but fenders headlights and a bumper would be nice to get it somewhat respectable of a looking truck uh ben bedside fender flares is the last thing i'm going to do to this truck it's just not feasible to care in order to get this truck in a running driving circumstance um, I would like to keep factory AC, and I think I can do that with the way it's set up. But for long-term purposes, I don't know if I'll ever keep it. Uh, in the future, uh, the factory cruise is being taken out. It will never be used again. I debated whether to keeping it or letting it go. It makes more sense to let it go. As well as, in the future, the ABS will go. But for right now, I need the ABS to run the Speedo. And I just need the factory harnesses and computers to work as I put this back together. Um, change just a little minimal amount of stuff in order for this to function like a factory vehicle. And not have it be a... Um, what would be the word? Uh, total chaos? I don't know if that would be the correct word. But the idea is to try and get this vehicle to behave like a factory vehicle if you just got in it, started to key and go. That is the whole point. It's the one thing I like about my Jeep that I'm trying to keep up with it just being a turnkey go vehicle. I could daily drive it, don't want to, but I can. That is the point with this. I don't want to go full race car. I want to have fun with it. The factory drive line is fine. Other than the trans, I need to go through the valve body. But that's low on the priority because the trans works. That is low on the priority. The biggest things that are high on the priority, fuel system, wiring, battery, brakes, front clip, and possibly a bumper. Uh, and two more 35 tires, but that might be later. I'm going to try and record, and this might be kind of long of a video, but I'm going to try and record... How am I changing this from factory to what I need it to be future-proof to, if that makes sense? I want to pair, compare and contrast what do I have factory and then change it to what I need it for the future. I don't like redoing things. I don't like doing things twice. I hate it. I hate it with a passion burning of a thousand firing suns. I hate doing things twice. That's why... I'm not a fabricator. I would have took him three times to get the rear engine cage to look like this. This is fantastic. 
I could never do this my first go. I don't even think I could do this in my th first three goes. So, fabrication work is not my strong suit. I can make things work, but it would look horrendous. I'm almost scared to even put a battery back here and do the little bit of fabrication I need to do to put a battery back here because it's going to look horrendous. But I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. This looks so good that I don't want to screw it up visually wise. But I can't have them do everything because I don't have that much money to do have them do everything. So I'm going to play to my strong suits with wiring, electronics, and engines, transmissions, all that other stuff. They gave me a good foundation. I'm going to put this back together with mostly stock stuff, but I'm going to try and document how I change from stock setup to future-proof setup so I don't have to redo things. And the biggest thing I'm going to try and cover is how I'm changing it wiring-wise. I'm going to use every factory harness I can to optimize this truck. I don't want to have to redo wiring harnesses, if that makes sense. Eventually, I will have to make wiring harnesses, but I'm trying to avoid that right now. So, truck's back. That's an update on the truck. I'll probably do a video on how bad the front suspension company is, True Travel. They're terrible. I'm going to have a video on wiring, the rear lights, the fuel tank in, have a video on probably the fuel system, and I don't know after that. I'll have to see. There'll probably be a video on the brakes, but that will be more towards the end when I get it running so then I can actually drive it and then see what I need to change with the brakes. I definitely need to change with the brakes. And there's more things about the brakes because this is a 98 and we use newer brakes from like a 2011. Um, there's subtle differences that you do not know about until you start comparing parts. Um, if you didn't notice throughout this video, I'm in my own place now. I'm no longer like in my parents' garage. So... I'm in my own place. This I'm also working on to create mounts for for my four-wheeler, which is right there. That's also broken. This is getting worked on. This is getting worked on. Bought the parts for that, but I still have to work on that. So, if you made it this far, I don't know if I'm going to record this or not, but apparently this has a typical problem being having a weak frame. Hooray. Um, if you don't know, if you can't, you probably can't see. Back here, the lower control arm ripped its ears off the frame down there. And how that happened was, is I hit a tree with this thing going about, I want to say 15. I wasn't going fast at all. I nicked a tree with this tire, and I literally didn't even go over the handlebars. I just stopped abruptly at 15, and it just ripped the control arm right off the frame. From what I can gather, this is a common problem with these. The Scramblers and the Sportsmans from like 2016 to now, they all have this problem. So I bought about... I think that's about $300 worth of structural uh, upgrades for the frame of this thing to not only repair that, but also make it stronger. I've been too busy to even rip this apart. I bought the parts, now i got to install them. I don't know if somebody wants a video on that. So, let me know if anybody wants a video on that. Or any video on this trailer of how I'm creating mounts 
to make this a very optimized trailer for four wheelers. And I will have videos on this. So give me some feedback and whether, what do you want exactly to see out of me on terms of this truck and probably the four wheeler. The trailer is kind of, uh, to me is kind of like stupid stuff that I'm doing to it that I don't think requires any video. But I do want to put videos out of what was on the stock and how I'm changing it from stock and give detailed changes and document the changes to optimize this truck to keep it like a factory behaving truck. That is the plan. So this has gone on long enough. Um, I do appreciate you watching this long. Um, give me some input to see what exactly you would want to see or how to, let's see how I go about recording this. The idea is to compare and contrast what it was factory and put it back and what modifications I'm doing. But that's about it. Thanks for listening to me ramble on. And I don't know what else I'm going to put out. So, yeah. See you on the next one.